Uh, you're not the first person to say that. In fact, I, w there was a film called Nine Months, and I was in Chicago at the time when that movie came out, and people, women constantly asking me for my autograph. <laughs> yes, I was in Cambridge from um, uh, 83 to 86, so that is quite a long time ago, and it, I think it's a very valuable education experience because you do get taught from some of the world's best researchers, um, but it's a very high pressure experience. Yes, there is a lot of pressure. I think things are a little bit different now, but uh, if you achieve a mark that is less than, I think, 40%, then you are laid off. And there is an exam at the end of every year, and if you get less than that threshold, then you are laid off. And that's the same in all universities, it's not just Cambridge. And so it is a lot of stress. So I'm wearing some 3D glasses, they are polarizing the light. One allows through the light wave that is polarized like this, and the other allows the light that's polarized like this. Normally when you wear normal sunglasses, very often they, they have polaroids in them, but they have both the same polarization. These ones are opposite. They're for 3D glasses, and if I close one eye and I look in the mirror, then one looks dark, and if I close the other eye, the other one looks dark. My name is Ben Murdin, I'm a professor in physics at the University of Surrey and I'm a researcher in quantum physics and quantum technologies. I think TED is brilliant because it reaches everybody and normally I am a, a professor in a university and I speak to other colleagues who are also professors in universities and sometimes I'm speaking to students but with TED you can get your ideas out to everybody. It's a way that we can communicate what we are doing in universities with a, a wider audience. I think the two biggest problems are energy and the environment and so um, my own research in quantum physics is about producing technologies that will help us to be more efficient with our energy use and to do things that are better for the environment. Yeah, okay, so he's a very famous uh, fictional physicist. I really don't like him. He's not like normal physicists. We are nice people. We are uh, interesting and uh, not so autistic and crazy, I think. I think he is a crazy liar and very dangerous. He's not as bad as the politicians we have in the UK right now, but <laughs> we should not trust him. Yeah, also a very brilliant physicist, very smart guy but also a bit mad and he's quite religious and he, he believes in many things that I think is complicated. Actually, he, my, my father is a physicist and my father discovered the first black hole and Stephen Hawking made a bet that my father's discovery was not true and so I don't like Stephen Hawking so much. Also, uh, yeah, a fantastic artist, so he was one of my uh, favourite artists when I was a young teenager and at the time when he was singing and dressing up in these really amazing clothes, it was wonderful to see such uh, an impressive and innovative uh, artist. It's interesting that you should ask me about him because actually his novel called The Picture of Dorian Gray is about a rejuvenation machine. There's a picture on the wall in the attic and the art person in the, in the book is watching the, the, the picture and getting younger all the time while he watches the uh, the picture and that's the kind of time machine I think actually it's going to be possible in the future. Yes I feel very sorry for him he was clearly um, persecuted for something that we would call very normal today he was different um, from people at that time being a homosexual and he was persecuted and I feel very bad about that I think he's a great artist uh, a wonderful writer and he should not have been persecuted. I like um, futuristic movies. I don't like um, animations and uh, cartoons, but I do like science fiction movies. Um, I like them because uh, they, they bring you to ima imagine what technologies might be possible for us in the future. Well, that, that movie is about very complicated robotic technology, isn't it? And uh, I think that that is going to be quite difficult because you need a lot of energy in order to be able to make such a sophisticated robot and to, so to, to it, it's the energy is really the problem. I think that computer technology to be able to control robots is actually perfectly possible but where do we get the energy to power them? That's the real question. <laughs> I do believe that time machines are possible um, but maybe not the way that you imagine them with many science fiction movies like Back to the Future 
uh, where you have a, a machine with a person in it and it jumps from one time to another time. That is, that's too difficult to understand. But, but time machines where you make things younger or older, an individual object, make it younger or older, so call it a re rejuvenation or an aging machine. I think that is that is possible. Uh, quite a recent British actor. I, I like him. I saw his film High Rise last year. Um, yeah, I like I like his plays. I think I think it's an interesting movie because it's about communities and societies and how how rapidly they they can break down. And I worry about the future, and particularly about en energy and food resources and how we will get more and more competitive with each other. And you see that in the UK right now with the the breakdown in the relationship with Europe, people are getting more selfish. And so that's why I like the High Rise movie, is because it's, a, it's about selfishness of, of people and how it uh, comes out in bad situations. Actually, I've been married for 20 years and my wife is both very beautiful and also the smartest person I know. She is the world's leading expert in how to treat both hepatitis and HIV at the same time. She's very smart. I actually think physicists are, and scientists in general are interesting people because actually they have many interests and I very rarely meet a scientist who is only interested in science in their laboratory.